Becky Howell. I'm the director of GIS for Agua Caliente Band of Cree Indians. I was on the team assigned to redesign the new Agua Caliente Indian Canyons websites. The older websites were a little outdated and they wanted us to rebuild them with a fresh look and enhanced functionality. The GIS contribution to the new website was twofold. The first being providing maps and uh, detailed information about the trails, and the second was to showcase the breathtaking beauty of the Indian Canyon. So immediately I thought a story map would be the perfect way to meld those two objectives. We wanted an application that would showcase the beauty of the canyons, but also provide functionality in terms of maps and detailed information about each trail. Making photography the focus, the pictures highlight scenic views from each of the trails, while information providing detailed descriptions such as hiking time, distances, and elevation gain allows the users to choose the trail or hike that's appropriate for them. I'm Cheryl Schippentower. I'm a plant ecologist for the uh, Confederated Tribes of the Umatilla Indian Reservation. This was what we call the, the Climate Data Viewer. It is a product of a BIA-funded effort to inform you know, the tribal government, including policymakers and staff, of the data information that's available for assessing climate change impacts, specifically to our traditional foods. And what those are, are what we call our first foods, and that's water, aquatic resources, so salmon is a major category there, wildlife, roots and berries. And so the Department of Natural Resources, we have a mission that we follow. It was adopted in 2006. And it's based on the first food and how they're served in tribal meals. With this climate data viewer, it will help us improve our decision making with dealing with kind of protection, restoration enhancements of the first foods. And so the intended audience is decision makers, and so that's our, you know, all our policy makers. We have an elective governing body of nine members, and so they make all the policy decisions for us along with, they have commissions and committees that advise them, and then also for staff, and you know, ultimately for tribal members of the Umatilla tribe. A lot of the Department of Natural Resources utilize this, but other programs and departments use this, so you know, our public works can use this information, our planning, our health department, and form their kind of planning and management. My name is Joseph Robertson. I'm currently a doctoral student at South Dakota State University, studying in the math and statistics department with the PhD program of the computational science and statistics. It just started with an idea, this idea called data sovereignty, where we want data to work for tribal communities, combating erosion of sovereignty through federal Indian law and policy. What I've been doing with the Tribal Story Map Challenge was to really start examining history and federal Indian law and policy and how we could take all of those ideas, pair it with higher education and nation building, and then quantify these things using computational statistics. Originally, I had been working with my home tribe as a statistical consultant, but then I started thinking more broadly that if I created this initiative about data sovereignty, that it might even be better to develop a framework that serves all of our tribes in the U.S., where it just doesn't apply to, to my home reservation. So my whole audience is, is anyone in Indian country that's wanting to look at data as a matter of sovereignty and how we strategize to, to set up projects that allow for that success.